morning, ma'am. Good morning. On behalf of News of Bahrain and the Daily Tribune, we welcome you. Thank you. For our viewers, introduce yourself. Dr. Maryam Fadal Abdullah, a consultant in medical genetics and PGT, pre-implantation genetic testing. I got my medical degree from Bahrain, my PhD from the University of Edinburgh in medical genetics, and then I specialized in PGT in Chicago. Thank you so much. Let's move on to the question. Cancer is a leading cause of death worldwide. Could you explain what cancer is at a genetic level and how genetic testing is currently helping in its early detection, treatment, personalization and overall management? Cancer is a genetic disease. 10% of cancers are inherited. Based on the cancer mutation, we decide on a certain treatment plan. And that's what's known as targeted therapy, which falls under the specialty of precision oncology. So we always advise people who have a strong family history of cancers to get genetically tested. We take a simple blood test. We do the testing, and if they do have a genetic mutation which increases their risk of developing cancer, we follow them up. If the cells started dividing, we then refer them to um, surgeons so that they could uh, deal with it at an early stage. That's a good information. Bahrain recently announced the use of gene editing technology to treat sickle cell disease. How does this breakthrough therapy work and what does it mean for patients suffering from genetic blood disorders in the region? Yes, so sickle cell disease is an autosomal recessive condition, which means that if the parents, the mother and the father are both carriers of the mutation, with every pregnancy, there will be a 25% chance of having an affected child. So what we do here is we advise them to go through PGT, pre-implantation genetic testing, which allows us to detect genetic abnormalities in embryos and then transfer the healthy unaffected ones into the mother. And by doing so, we're trying to help the couple to have a healthy unaffected child. Now, recently, there is a new gene editing technique called CRISPR-Cas9, and through CRISPR, we can edit the gene so that the patients would uh, not suffer from this disease anymore. I have a question on behalf of this generation. Infertility and recurrent pregnancy laws are emotionally and physically challenging for many couples. How can genetic testing assist in identifying and addressing the causes behind these issues? When it comes to infertility and recurrent miscarriages, we always advise the couple, first of all, the wife to see a specialist in obstetric and gynecology and fertility, just to see if there is any problem regarding the hormones, regarding the fallopian tubes, or regarding any other issue. And we also inform the husband to actually see a specialist in urology to see if they have any issues that would prevent the wife from getting pregnant. If everything is fine, what we do actually is we advise them to do the chromosomal or the genetic testing so that we know if there is a cause for the infertility or the recurrent miscarriages. Once we realize what the problem is, we try to see if we can manage it. And if they do have, let's say, for example, a chromosomal abnormality, we also advise them to go for PGT so that we can choose the embryos which have the normal healthy chromosomes, and then we transfer those embryos into the mother so that hopefully she could have a healthy pregnancy. For our readers unfamiliar with the term, could you explain what pre-implantation genetic testing, PGT, entails and how it is transforming reproductive medicine, particularly in reducing inherited disorders? PGT stands for pre-implantation genetic testing. What we do is we detect genetic abnormalities in embryos and then we transfer the healthy unaffected ones into the mother. How do you do that? So first, I'll just give you an example. For example, let's just say sickle cell disease. If both couples are carriers of sickle cell, with every pregnancy, there's a 25% chance of having an affected child. So if they come to me and they tell me they don't want to take this risk, we advise them to go for PGT. They start with IVF and beta fertilization. We give the mother ovarian stimulation medications for 10 to 14 days, depends, every girl's body is different. And then what we do is we retrieve the eggs, we fertilize the eggs by the husband's sample, and then once the embryos are developed, we actually take a biopsy. We'll biopsy every single embryo, and then we test those cells. For example, I can tell you embryo number one is healthy, not affected, because this embryo now is not carrying the mutation from the mother or the father. It took both the normal genes. So this embryo now we can happily transfer into the mother so that she can have a healthy child. For example, embryo number two is affected. How did we know it was affected? It obviously inherited the mutated gene from the mother and the mutated gene from the father. So we would not recommend transferring this embryo. And we would do that with all the remaining embryos. At the end, what we want to do is we would like to take those healthy unaffected embryos that we tested and then transfer them into the mother so that she would have a healthy unaffected child. Thank you, that's a new information for us. 
as the first GCC national specializing in this rare and highly advanced field, how do we envision the future of reproductive genetics evolving in the Gulf region? And what role will PGT and similar technologies play in standard medical practice? We are hoping through PGT to eliminate genetic conditions in future generations. This is why we always spread awareness and tell couples before getting married, we would advise you to get genetically tested because as you know, in our part of the world, we have lots of consanguineous marriages. So the rate of having similar mutations, which would increase the risk of having an affected child is high. And therefore we advise them to get genetically tested, whether before getting married or before deciding to have a child. With rapid advancements in genetic medicine, there are also ethical and cultural concerns. How do we address these challenges and what steps can be taken to improve public awareness and acceptance of genetic testing and reproductive technologies in Bahrain and the wider region? We are working a lot on spreading awareness, whether through social media channels, whether through, through newspaper articles, whether um, on TV and interviews. So we're trying to do that to help the community understand better the role of medical genetics, the role of genetic testing to help them having healthy, unaffected children. Thank you so much, Dr. Mariam. This session was very informative for everyone. Would you like to give any message for our viewers? I would like to thank all the members of the Data Tribune for giving me this opportunity to, to talk about all those essential and very important topics. Thank you to all of you. And I would like to encourage the public to get genetically tested and to understand more about this field so that hopefully we'll have a healthy new generation. Thank you.